Your Z-Track is also an injection that goes in the muscle. It's used a different technique and it's used for different medications. For example, medications like iron, medications that are, that are thicker, they can discolor certain tissue and skin, so they use a different method for the Z-Track. The Z-Track is very similar to the intramuscular gluteal injection. You've already know how to perform that one. This one's just slightly different. We need to taunt the skin to the side so we can get a deeper penetration of the medication administered. You still use 23 to 25 gauge syringe, anywhere from one to three inches. You would need your bandage, alcohol prep, your medication, in this case we're using sterile water, Emerson basins for your trash, your gauze or cotton balls, your gloves, and of course your sharps container nearby. As far as once you're done with the injection and you're getting rid of the needle or the syringe, not having that sharps container available to you. If it's mounted on the wall, you want to take under consideration where you've placed the patient and your positioning so that if you're actually administering an injection, you would have the sharps container right next to you. You don't want to cross over. For example, your uh, sharps container would be to your left. Now you're actually having to cross over this way and that could be dangerous for your yourself and for the patient. So you want to make sure that where you position the patient to where you're actually standing, you want to have the sharps container there right next to you. So you can just throw that syringe and needle in there. Going to grab my alcohol prep, wipe the valve, grab my needle, make sure that the hub and the needle are screwed in correctly. 0.5 is what we're going to draw. Going to come up at eye level, inject your air. And one thing you need to remember is don't push it all the way in, especially if there's safety lock, because you'll lock your whole needle. And withdraw at eye level. So you're going to withdraw by pulling back on the plunger. 0.5, remove any air bubbles, withdraw. Use the one scoop method, so that way you can prevent any injuries from a needle stick. You want to make sure you understand the different types of injections, the different sites for injections, uh, especially when it's you're dealing with a fast-paced environment. If you're working in a fast-paced environment where you know you see quite a bit of patients in one day, it's a lot to think about. You want to make sure that you understand your injections. You want to make sure you have enough of your medications. Sometimes as medical assistants we get involved in technique and knowing technique, knowing how to administer the different injections. We also have to keep in mind the medication we're giving. Make sure you're looking at expiration dates. Make sure you have enough of that particular medication on hand your syringes, your needle sizes. You have to make sure you have the right needle size according to the injection site. It makes a difference on the needle sizes. So those are things to also think about when we're focusing on giving an injection. Now remember, before you begin any procedure, you must wash your hands before doing so. It helps prevent the spread of disease and it maintains a sterile environment. You do want to use your PPE, which is your personal protection equipment. You want to make sure that you're using gloves. A lot of times, medical assistants could get caught up in, we've got so many patients to do, let's go ahead and hurry up and administer the injection, and we forget to actually put our gloves on. And any kind of injection side, you could have some bleeding. So sometimes when we get a little too comfortable and don't use those gloves, now you're exposed to bodily fluids. Let me glove up and let us begin. Come on. Now that we're in the patient's room, the first thing you want to do is greet the patient, preferably by the last name, to maintain that level of professionalism. The only time you would use the first name is if you've already gained that rapport with the patient ahead of time. Hi, Ms. Hopper. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Now you want to explain to the patient what the procedure is all about. 
The doctor just ordered a Z-Track intramuscular injection. Okay. Okay. This particular injection is going to be given to you in your gluteal area, okay, which is the buttock. Okay. Now, what I need for you to do is to step down and to pull your trousers just below your gluteal cheek, the butt. And you want me to stand right here? Yes. Now with the Z-Track, you want to make sure you do not hit the sciatic nerve. With any gluteal intramuscular injection, you have to be careful of the sciatic nerve. This is the last nerve on your spinal column, which runs down the center of each gluteal cheek, okay? So you want to divide the glute into quadrants, okay? So you do that imaginary line, and it doesn't matter which cheek you prefer to do it on. And you want to go in the upper outer quadrant, which would be right about here, okay? Pull it to the side, or you can pull it up. You can pull it up or to the side. Before we begin the procedure, you must cleanse the area properly and thoroughly with your alcohol pad. You want to start right in the upper quadrant, upper outer quadrant. Start in the center and work your way outwards. You don't want to retrace what you've already wiped to ensure that your needle has actually penetrated sterile cleansed tissue. Now, you get your needle and syringe Take your cap off carefully. And mind you, with any gluteal injection, the minimum length of a needle should be one and a half inches, depending on the size of the patient. If you use a smaller needle, that medication is not going in the muscle. It could stay within the subcutaneous tissue. So then we're talking about a medication that's not gonna be absorbed fast enough and have the right effect uh, for what the patient needs it for because you didn't use the right size needle. You're gonna hold it as though you're writing with a pen or a pencil with your wrist motion, okay? I'm gonna go in at a 90 degree angle. See that? I'm gonna walk my fingers up. I'm gonna aspirate to ensure that I didn't hit a blood vessel. If I had, you would see blood go into the barrel of the syringe. It's called aspirating, where you actually draw back the syringe. And this technique is very, very important. What it's checking for is when you draw back or aspirate, if you see some blood being aspirated into the syringe, then you know you've hit a blood vessel. And you do not want to inject medication into a blood vessel. You can do damage to the blood vessel. So what you would do is, in any case, you would just immediately draw back. Once you've aspirated and everything looks good, no blood being aspirated in the syringe, you automatically will push the medication into the muscle. I'm going to push my medication. I'm going to withdraw my needle, pull the safety, discard into my sharps container, release, put the gauze square over the side. Just remember that you do not massage the Z-Track and that is because you don't want any medication to come back up and leak out. That defeats the whole purpose of the Z-Track. I have my bandage ready. I'm gonna place it over the site. And there, we've just completed our Z-Track intramuscular injection. You may want to have the patient sit for at least 10 minutes to observe any type of allergic reaction or syncope, which is fainting. After you've done all of these steps, make sure you document accordingly. Document the medication given, the expiration date. Documentation is key. Remember, if it wasn't documented, it never happened.